people who know me, they know that I am called to preach all across this country. I've preached in churches, I've preached in arenas, I've preached to entire cities of people. And I thank God for the gift because that's what it is. And it's not me, but it's him. Why he chose me, church, I don't know. But he chose me to carry his message in so many places around this country. And then he brought me here to this church called Trinity. And if you ask anybody here, they'll tell you, I don't know why he brought him here. But you know what, though? Thank God that he did, because all of us are better in one way or another because God saw fit to say, Reverend Johnson, you know, I stayed and my ministry on earth was three years. And in the coincidental church that my ministry right here has been three years. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Up by themselves this dry long. So it is the intended purpose of God the way He does the things that He does. Amen. And I can remember, church, I was in Atlanta for a leadership conference. And I was at this big hotel, you know, kind of spooky looking hotel, but this big hotel, I was at this hotel, and this young little boy about 11 or 12 years old he came up and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said uh Mister, have you seen the ghosts and i said it's, it's, i don't young, young man i don't know what you're talking about i don't know what you, he says you haven't seen the ghosts there's a ghost in this place and as I put my bag down and getting ready to check in, I watched the little fellow as he was tripping and skipping down the hall and he was asking everybody that he went up to, have you seen the ghost? Have you seen the ghost? The ghost, the ghost is in here and, 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 and he's the main attraction. He's the reason why people come to this place because the ghost is here. And you know, church, I thought about that thing. Even though this boy was talking about a haunted ghost, we serve a holy ghost. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And, and, and the holy ghost is the main attraction in this place. If the holy ghost is not in this place, we may as well close our Bibles, back on up, and get on out of here. Because if the Holy Ghost is not in here, there's no reason for us to come into this place. Amen? Amen. And so, so as, as, as I looked at this text and I, I, I looked at this particular scenario, I thank God for that little boy. Because that little boy opened up a window to a message this morning that you and I may be encouraged and lifted up. Because there is a ghost who is a part of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But I I challenge you this morning that if you have not seen the ghosts, you might need to look around because there are some people on your road. They know a whole lot about the ghost. They seen the ghost. Do I have any witnesses in here? They seen the Holy Ghost. They know all about it. They you can't see him physically, but he's got a way of coming into a place and taking control and show up and show out. Can I tell you about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost can turn a crackhead into a Christian. The Holy Ghost can turn a drunk into a deacon. The Holy Ghost can turn a tramp into a trustee. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. You need to have the Holy Ghost to make the Holy Ghost will set this church on fire. Amen. And the Bible tells us that we're going to need the ghosts to keep this church going. Have you ever been in a place in the winter time and it's cold and ain't got no heat? You, you got to have a little fire 
to want things up. Look at mothers. She know what I'm talking about. Because back in the day, they didn't have all of this AC and central air and, and heat. And you just had that little pot belly stove over in the corner, you know. And the deacons had to go and crank that thing up to get some heat. And, and when the fire started and the heat started, come on, talk to me. Folks start moving around and folks start getting up out their seat. And, and folks start, you know, like praising God because there was some fire that started. Well, I challenge you this morning Amen. that there is a ghost that can bring a fire into this place without a match. You don't believe me, do you? Stick with me, stick with me, and stay with me. The Holy Ghost is a part, church, of the Holy Trinity. It's not an it, it's a he. He is co-existent, he is co-eternal. He, 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 he is part God. You, 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 you cannot be ashamed of the Holy Ghost. You, 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 see, that's God. That's God's spirit. You can't pick one and say, I don't like that one, but I like that one. Because the truth be told, there are a lot of folk, you know, like, who are a little bit too high and mighty to acknowledge the Holy Ghost because you got the wrong conception of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not people ripping and running up and down the aisle. Right. That's not the Holy Ghost. Right. The Holy Ghost is that power that worketh in you on the inside that will show up on the outside that will do some things for you that you cannot do for yourself. That's the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I can't make it without the Holy Ghost. I don't want to make it without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, you know, is what keep me going. It's going to keep this church going. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God some praise in this house. Tell your neighbor, turn, turn to him. Turn to the other neighbor, but they don't want to look at you. Don't tell the other one, say, I'm looking for the ghost. This, this, this Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, this Holy Ghost was there, church, during creation. It was there. This Holy Ghost was there when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tossed into the fiery furnace. The Holy Ghost was there. The Holy Ghost was there, Raynette, when when Moses crossed the Red Sea. The Holy Ghost was there. The Holy Ghost was what made Jeremiah say, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me, but I'm gonna preach to myself. And if you study the Bible, you will find out that the Holy Ghost not only seals you, but the Holy Ghost will fill you. Come on, talk to me every day. Not just one day, but each and every day. And on the day of Pentecost, church, the ghost showed up in his earthly ministry. And he has given us grace. And that should make us shout until the day that he returns. But that, that, that's another, another sermon. But when you visit any church, as some of y'all have come to visit today, the first question you ought to ask is, is the ghost there? Hmm? Has anybody seen the ghost? I ain't talking about that ghost that that little boy was talking about. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Is the ghost there? Mm -hmm. How you doing, Jackie? Talk to your mama there. She told me you'd be here. Amen. Thank you. Amen. If you visit any church and the preacher don't have the Holy Ghost, you might as well back that thing on up and get on out of there. If you visit any church and the choir don't have the Holy Ghost, you in the wrong place. If you visit any church and the ushers and the deacons and the elders don't have the Holy Ghost, it make you wonder what you come in here for. But I declare to you this morning that the Holy Ghost is in this place. And
when you look at this text, it teaches us something. Brother Henson, it teaches us that the ghost always shows up at the appointed time. He does not show up on EST, Eastern Standard Time. He does not show up on PST, Pacific Standard Time. He does not show up on CST. He shows up on HOT, his own time. Amen, amen. And what I love about the Holy Ghost is God is a God yeah. that you ought to be able to feel sometimes at least. Yeah. If I'm the only one, you, you ought to be able to feel him sometimes. <laughs> we, 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 we are Christians. We, we, we don't serve a God who's a statue or a, a monument. We serve a true and living God, a breathing God. We, we serve the kind of God. Your God is alive. And that ought to give you reason that when you come in here and you know what he did for you, when you look back over your life and you see all that he's brought you through and everything that he, you ought to come in here with an attitude of gratitude to give God your very Y'all driving out there. I know he's been good. We serve a God church that we can feel. We don't have to, we don't, we don't serve the kind of God that we have to burn incense to. And, 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 and we don't serve that kind of God. And in the day of Pentecost, does everyone know what that is? Because I, I don't want to go. And any further, if folk don't know about that upper room and, and what took place in that upper room, y'all, y'all, Bible readers, where you at? Y'all, y'all know what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they were, they were up there, they was at a good church up there too, y'all. Real good church. And in the day of Pentecost, hmm, well, let me do this because we gotta back up a little bit because that was a feast, Pentecost. But there were two more feasts that happened before that. And, 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 and in order for you to appreciate the Feast of Pentecost, you need to know about those two other feasts that happened before that. So if I can take you down the hallway of Hebrew history, I want to share with you that, that this first feast was called the Feast of the Passover. This, this was the feast. You remember when that mean old Pharaoh, he was out to kill God's people and the death angel was going to come and, and God says, go tell my people that I want them to, to kill a, a lamb and I want them to take the blood of the lamb and put it over the doorpost and the side posts. Now, don't worry now. They didn't just kill the lamb and throw him away. That was some good meat. So they did roast the lamb for later on. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, 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 but God said, kill the lamb, take the blood, and put it over the doorpost and the side post. And when the death angel came, he would pass over your house. You know, church, I looked at that thing, Miss Charlotte, that was blood insurance. I didn't say flood insurance. That was blood insurance. See, flood insurance help you after you already been hurt, but blood insurance will keep you from being hurt. Talk to me, somebody. That, that, that blood insurance. Uh-huh. That, 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 that insurance that says what can wash me white as snow nothing but the blood of Jesus blood insurance oh the blood of Jesus I'm talking about blood 
flood insurance. And so he, he told them, he said, now here's what I want you to do. I, I, I want you to put that blood over and the death angel is going to pass over. I'm going to save you. I'm going to protect you. Isn't that what he's been doing for you? He's been saving you. And so they celebrated this Passover because they were giving praise and honor to God for protecting them and preserving them and save, saving them for all this time. Now, Brother Rollins, there's another part to that, but it's a little too deep, and I don't, I don't want to mess nobody up, you know. But if Miss Saylor said, give it to him, Pastor, I give it to you. Give it to him, Miss Saylor. Let, let, let me hear you then tell her. Give it to him. She said, give it to you. Okay. Uh, now, 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 watch this now. Watch this. I told you they roasted that lamb. They didn't throw him away just for the blood. They, they roasted it. Ain't nobody going to throw away no good meat. They roasted it. But when you look at that lamb, there was a wood spine that ran up, a piece of wood that ran up his back in order to put him on the grill. And there was another one that ran this way to stretch the lamb's arm out. What you had was a lamb on a cross before there was the lamb on the cross. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. You, you ain't gonna get this everywhere, you know. Like God showed me to this church. He showed me that I'm gonna show you about this lamb who is going to be placed on a cross. It's gonna be thousands of years, you know, ahead. But I'm, if you look, and that's why I'm telling you right now, if you look and listen at some things that are happening right now, you will find out that God is giving you a preview of the main attraction of stuff that's about to happen. Mm. Where in the world, where in the world, and when in the world have you seen that a country called the United States of America could be embroiled in so much hatred and bigotry. You know, where in the world do you can see folk fighting one day and then the next day a total eclipse come and everybody stop fighting. Come on, talk to me somebody. Ain't nobody fighting. Ain't nobody mad at nobody. Everybody just stop and looking up and seeing the wonder and the power of God. See, see, that's the kind of God you serve. And see, that's why, you know, when the preacher say, you give God praise in this house, you're not waiting for the preacher to have to tell you to praise God when he already showed you. He showed you what he do. Natural phenomenon. Spiritual phenomenon. Waking you up in the morning is one of the ask any doctor. That is a mystery. Because you ain't got to wake up. When you go to sleep, you don't know what's going on. Hey man, just talk to him, brother. But God is showing us stuff, and He showed these people. But I gotta get moving. The next, the next feast, I'm getting there, mother, was the feast of weeks. Why they call it that? Well, can I teach just a little bit? Yeah. Then I'm gonna get on the freeway yeah. and take y'all on home. The feast of weeks. It was 49 days, brother Ron. You know where they planted and, 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 and they got the first fruits and, and, and 49 days, seven days in a week, seven times seven is 49. I think my mind for math all right. Is that right, Christian? See, see, so, so it was the feast of weeks. And the Bible tells us that during this time, the saints of God picked up leaves and they were waving the leaves back and forth to God. They were waving the leaves. The crops had not come in yet, but they loved and appreciated and believed God so much that they were thanking him in advance for the crop before the crop even come on, come on. Yeah, they were waving the leaves. They had no doubt in their mind that the crops were going to come in and they didn't have to wait until the crops came in like most folk do. You know, you we good at blessing and thanking God when we already got it in our hand. But can you give God praise before you even get it in your hand? Can you give God praise on credit? God credit is good. Ain't hard the last time I see you. I'm looking for the ghosts. The 
this morning. The ghosts. You know, I I go to churches and I not just church. I ain't talking about just church. Oh, brother, brother, brother Cord, can you give us a little bit more air conditioning there, please, sir? I go to churches and and I look around and I see people and 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 I ain't mad, you know, God has blessed them and got them up, 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 you know, and to the point, you know, that they're doing fine. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. We family. Amen. Can we talk? Yeah. You know, but you know, I, I see folk that have forgotten how good a syrup sandwich tastes. Yeah, good. I, 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 I see folk that have forgotten how good it is to eat some eggs and rice, you know, like scrambled and fried together. I, 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 I see folk that done forgot how, how sugar water tastes. Come on, talk to somebody. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 the ghost will remind you, you know, about all these things because the purpose of the Holy Ghost is, is a reminder to show you things and remind you of how it was. And if you can remember how you used to be, you, you, you remember, you know how you used to be and what you used to didn't have and what you used to drive and where you used to live and you look at where God has brought you right now, you ought to give God a show of love. Woo! You ought to give God a show of love. I'm talking about the fact that they never have seen the ghost in this place. You know, I, I looked at this thing, and, you know, it's amazing about the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament church, the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost rested upon folk. But in the New Testament, it says the Holy Ghost lives in us. And that's good news right there because you walking around locked and fully loaded every day. You, 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 you got something inside of you that can knock down walls. You, you got something inside of you that can help you to leap over tall bills. I'm talking about the ghost, the Holy Ghost. You got a power that working in you that can cause folk to give you what they said they wasn't going to give you. Come on, anybody ever got a job like that? Huh? When you knew you weren't qualified for the job, you applied for the job, and the man said, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this, but, but, but something just tell me to go head on and, 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 and that's the Holy Ghost. You ought to never, ever, ever in your mind ever be ashamed of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere you go, you need to tell people if the ghost ain't in there, I ain't interested. Amen. I ain't going in there. But this message is for people that are looking for the ghost. I, I, I want more of your peace. I want more, don't you? I want more of his person. I want more of his presence. And, and in order to have that, you have to have the, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. But I told you seven times seven is 49, you know, and, 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 and we had the, 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 the feast of weeks and, and the folk was waving their leaves because they were thanking God for what he was going to do later on in their life. And then one day they woke up and they weren't waving leaves, they were waving loaves. You know, you know that a loaf is larger than a leaf. That means that God had come through on his promise to provide. You've heard this particular, you know, scripture that says, Our God shall supply Woo! all our needs. God came through church for the children of Israel. And so instead of you know, just sitting back saying, oh, he going to do it anyway. They went ahead on and said, no, 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 no. We need to stop and establish a day 
of Thanksgiving stop and establish a day to show appreciation. We need to stop and establish a day to show appreciation for Miss Lucille Saylor because of what she's done and, and to give her her roses right now. And that's what we're doing today, church. Come on, give it up. That's what we're doing. There are folks that have brought history that have planted seeds. And I look at this church, Miss Saylor, this is because of the seed that you planted. A long time ago. Stand up, Sister Cedar. Come on. Stand up and, and, and look around. Come on, y'all give her her roses right now. Yeah. This ghost, as I hasten to close, this, this, this ghost. Let me tell you something. This, this ghost, he changes the atmosphere in the place. When, 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 the, when the ghost comes in, pe pe people that don't even talk to each other, you know, don't even like each other, they start talking to each other. That's the ghost. When, when, the, when the ghost comes in, and I've seen it with my own eyes, a millionaire and a homeless man could be sitting side by side on the same pew and they both enjoying the service and slapping high five. They would never talk to each other outside of the church, but they came into a place where the ghost was in operation and the ghost would make people who won't even speak to each other love up on each other. This ghost, this ghost. And the ghost shows up on the day of Pentecost, church. And watch this. There were 120 people waiting in an upper room on the ghost. They didn't know when he was going to come because I told you he comes at the appointed time. And, and the appointed time is not their time. It's, it's when he get ready. And, and, and so, so this was 120 misfit People, what you talking about, preacher? Well, everybody is not perfect. Okay, there was Peter who came in there with his hypocritical, racist, prejudice self. He was there. There was James and John. They, you know them. They just fight all the time, always looking for a good fight and something to fight for. You know, there, 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 there was there was Thomas, you know, and he doubted everything. Didn't believe doubting Thomas. Everything. All of them were misfit people. They were all different. They were all in this room what you're trying to tell us preacher that's what a church is all about all of y'all are misfit people each and every one of y'all are different but when you come in here you're all on the same mind you come in here to serve the same god when you come up in here everybody is the same because my father told me he is no respecter of I look at it this way. The, the Bible says, got to hurry up now, I smell that food over there. The, the Bible says it this way. said they were in that upper room, Brother Barrett, and they were on one accord. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You, you're a musician. You, you can appreciate this. That word accord comes from the historic musical genre chord. It says they were all on one accord, as different as they were, as different as their backgrounds. Some had money, some didn't. Some had degrees, some didn't. Some, you know, like had big ears, some didn't. You know, they, they were all different. But the Bible says when they came up in that room, they were on one accord. Amen. Thank you for the help. See, see, see. That's how a church has harmony. Listen to me, let me teach you. There's a difference between unity and harmony and synergy. Synergy means to take something that's bad, 
mix it with something else, and it turned out, and let me do it this way, you want scripture? Romans 8, 28 said, and we know that all things, the good and the bad, work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. But this text told, shows us that they had synergy. Synergy. Synergy is taking what's negative and mixing it what's positive for a good effect. Okay. Brother Ross, in a cup, you got your back. You got the negative pole and you got the positive pole. But that car ain't going to start until you connect the negative with the positive. I, 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 I'm trying to tell you, ain't no fire going to start up in here until all the negative folk get together with the positive folk and put this thing in order that God can be glorified, God can be praised, He can be given the glory for what He intended this church to be. Look at this thing. We want unity in the church. But there's a difference between unity and uniformity. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All the choir members in the choir can have on the same robe. That's uniformity. Mm -hmm. But there is no unity. Right. Yeah, because Sister Miller don't like Sister Baker. You know, you know, Sister Brown going with, you know, with her husband and you know, there, there, there is no unity. But there's uniformity. Don't be fooled, you know, when you see everybody looked alike and everybody dressed alike and, and everybody pretended, but 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 when the Holy Ghost come in the place, it'll seek you out. Have you ever seen how grandma, you know, like can look at a person and say, I oh, don't know about her, baby. Yeah. Some, some, some just ain't you. You had that grandma too? Some, 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 some ain't right. I, I took a girlfriend home one time and I just thought she was the best thing since sliced bread. And my mama said, I oh, don't know about her, baby. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will show you things that you should not know. And I tell folk all the time, you know, you need to love and appreciate having the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will do so many things in your church. And you know, and the Holy Ghost, you know what else it'll do? <clears throat> the Holy Ghost will change the attitudes in the place. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, in this text it says that it came like a mighty rushing wind. Isn't that what it said? Like a mighty rushing wind. Yes. It came and it, it filled the house. What you talking about, preacher? It said the whole house was filled and, and then it filled the people. Now I had to go back and look at that Genesis because I said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Holy Spirit came in and it filled the whole house. It, it didn't say that it filled the people in the house first. It, it, it filled the whole house. You know what that tells me to tell you? The Holy Spirit can come in, but it won't go in everybody. Woo! Woo! Yeah, it, it won't go in everybody. Everybody can receive the Holy Spirit until you get your heart right. What the Bible tells you, God will not dwell in an unclean temple. Talk to me, somebody. This because this text tells us it said that the mighty Russian wind came in and then it said something else that blew my mind because it said that that there was fire like cloven tongues there was fire up in the church house in the upper room and I looked at this thing and I said, oh my God, he done brought people that don't even like each other together, people that would never even speak each to each other together, all in one place, all in one room, and God is making this thing work. You don't know why you 
sitting by this person and you would never speak to. You don't know why, but God knows, and He's putting yeah. everything together. And can just um for for a, for a sidebar, brother Wolf, I never talk in my life. It's a sidebar. Can I say this right here? Old folk, you need these young folk. Amen. Your life gonna go out one day. Yes. You need you need to be talking to these young folk yes. and, and, and passing on wisdom yes. to these young folk. Yes. And young folk, you need to sit your tail down and shut up and listen to these old folk. Yes. They got wisdom to pass along to you. Yes. See, the, see, the whole thing is God says, I'm trying to keep this thing going. And I can't keep it going unless I get the positive and the negatives to come together. Unless I get the old folk and the young folk to get together. Unless I can get the black folk and the white folk to get together. This thing is bigger than just you and me, church. This is God's plan. And he sent the Holy Ghost to put this thing all together. Come on, talk to me, church. Yeah. Have you seen the ghost? Anybody seen it? But, 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 but this five, run, 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 I, I promise you, y'all give me five more minutes. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. This fire, it, 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 I, I look at the text now. God talks about fire in God in the Bible many times. You know, he talks about hell and that's fire. Y'all don't believe that there's a hell. I know. But, but I believe you believe because I hear you telling people to go there every day. <laughs> But 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 he talks about fire, brother Skip. Said, a clover talk. He fire broke out in that church house, that upper room. You see that? That's why when you hear people say, "Girl, child, that that, that church was on fire today." That's what they're talking about. Yeah. But it, it, there was fire in the fire in the spirit for those you know who are not biblically astute. We ain't talking about physical fire. We talking about in the spirit. Yes. There was fire. The Bible talks about fire. Bible even tells us that maybe, 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 maybe you read it that that the world when it comes to an end, it won't be by water this time, but it'll be by fire. Yeah. You know, even you remember Elijah. Elijah went out onto Mount Carmel, you know, and you know he he had challenged somebody that he could call his God to and he, he and he and he told God, God, show me what you're working with. God, show me, show me what you're working with. And God rained down fire. There was always fire in the Bible, and this text tells us that the whole church was on fire. You know, I looked at this thing because when I come to church, I want to see a fire. But you know, a lot of churches, you go in, you got folk who are ghostbusters. There used to be a ghost in that church. But there were some people, when the fire broke out, there's some people that carried fire extinguishers round in their pocketbook. Oh, come on, you know, like, can I be real now? See, I can talk like preaching, like I want to preach now. You know, y'all heard the announcement, you know. Like, I only got a few more sermons. I can say what I want to say. You know, there, there, are, there are some folk with water hoses in their pocketbooks. And, and if you break out into a Holy Ghost shout up in here, they're going to turn that fire extinguisher over on you. And they're going to put your fire out. I'm telling you right now. But I challenge you this morning, church. That thing can get contagious. And if you look at and touch somebody that's got the Holy Ghost working in them, that thing is contagious. And if you ever get it, and if you ever feel it, you will have a new appreciation for God and who he is. We serve the kind of God, a God you can feel sometimes, a God you can touch sometimes, a God you can hear from sometimes.
remember that God said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed And you know, as I close, you know, I, I, I was in Publix and I heard a shout over on aisle number nine. And I didn't know what it was and I walked around and I, I saw the lady and she was shouting, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I said, ma'am, you all right? She said, yeah, 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 I'm all right. She said, I came here looking exactly, you know, like for these you know, peas right here. And, and I see they got them on sale for front. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will show up and do some stuff for you. Look, look, look here. She got down to the cash register. Has this ever happened to you? She got to the cashier to check out. Sister Shanice, and, 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 and when she got to the cashier, she, the, the, the lady said, ma'am, do you have any coupons? And she said, no, I don't have no coupons. And the lady went up under the counter and got that little gun. Y'all know what it do. She said, I got this up for you, you know. And she went to knocking that price down. That, that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. She went to shopping because God showed up and did some stuff for her. And then she went out into the parking lot. And when she went out into the parking lot, going to her car, she, she heard somebody call her name, Mary! That's you, Mary! Child ain't seen, I lost your number. You know I still owe you a hundred dollars. Come here, come here, let me get it. That's the Holy Ghost! The Holy Ghost will make some stuff happen in your life that you were not expecting. Give God praise for the Holy Ghost. Doors of the church are now open. Come by letter. Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. I, I, I understand there are some people here that you like to keep your spiritual life private. But I believe that there are some people in here that are not covered by his blood. I believe there are some people here that don't have a church home. I just believe that there's somebody in here that you're afraid of what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know. And you in fear. Come. Just come. Just come. All you gotta do is come. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you just want to rededicate your life, I mean, ain't none of us perfect. If I wasn't up here preaching to you today, I'd put myself down there at the, at the, at the altar. Because this is a real thing. And when you get alone by yourself and nobody else around and you ain't got nobody to call on, just remember that still voice that going to tell you, I gave you a chance to come to me when you were down at Trinity and you didn't come. Now come. Just come. Come on. Come on. Because I know that I'm not living in a life and a time and in a church but all perfect people has got it all together your house is in order your job is in order your children are in order I know that is not the case because even if it is right now there's a chance that it might be your child that I'm watching on the news so I challenge you this morning even if everything is all right, just come now. Let me bless your family. Let, let me bless you. I'm not going to take long. This is a 60-second blessing. You got 60 seconds in your life for me to give you eternity. I challenge you to come right now. Just come. Come. Just come.
rest of you, if you would, if you would reach out your hand toward these people. You're still coming. I, I, I got time. And if, if there's anybody that the devil has told you, don't you go down there, fight him off right now, you know, and tell him, call him a liar and say, I'm going down. I'm going down there. Heavenly Father, Father, we prayed and asked the Holy Ghost to come into this place and do what it does best. And Father, you have done what you do. But now, God, because I have a right relationship with you and I know you so well and I know that you called me, I want to ask something of you, God. I want to ask you to reach into your resources, God. And I need you right now, God, you know, to provide for these who are gathered in front of me. They came, God, out of a need. But even more so than that, God, I believe they came out of faith. I believe, God, that they seen you do some stuff for other folk, and they right now are expecting you to do it for them. I just believe, God, beyond the shadow of a doubt, God, that you are about to make an example out of these people for the whole world to see that it was nobody but the Lord. I remember these people that gathered in front of this altar asking God to show up and show out in their life and to perform some things that he could never do before because I didn't know how to ask or I didn't ask. So we come in this morning, Lord, asking you to pour out your blessing. Turn their leaves into loaves this morning, God. Bless them in a mighty way and bless them to be a blessing to somebody else. And the people of God over this entire church say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. You just see a miracle in front of you. You, you, you just seen God do some stuff. Come on up and greet these people up here. Can y'all do that for me? Can y'all come and greet these, your brothers and sisters? Can come and greet them with a hug, a, a handshake? Come on. This is church. This is why we here. Come on and greet folk. I got time. You know, we'll do a second fellowship. I got time. Greet them. taxes, you know, you know what? You got the wrong perception. The reason you got to pay taxes is because you got a job. You need to start looking at this thing a little different, church. Okay? So this is the time now that we show God how much we appreciate Him for what He's done for us. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall God give into your bosom. And I don't know about you, but you know what? I just, I just don't know where I would be because I tried man, and man failed me, you know? And I believe your testimony is the same. That you tried man, and man did not come through. But I'm telling you, we serve the kind of God that every time you turn around, he'll bless Bless you. Amen. 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 Gentlemen, you may come now. Amen. 